Hello, everyone, and welcome to Stoked, the ultimate Star Trek online podcast. My name is Chris. Uh, hi, my name is Jeremy. So I'm busy playing. <laughs> today, we're doing something a little different. We Every now and then we do these loose, casual episodes where we get in the game and play. And in this episode, we're, we're shooting on Saturday before Season 2 comes out. And we've got uh, a bunch of our fleet mates on Tribble, a mm -hmm. bunch of you out there watching live as we shoot this. And Which we're gonna is be, epic, awesome. We're going to be jumping into uh, a game right now. Jeremy is heading to uh, where? Gamma Orionis. Gamma Orionis. I'm going to be running the chat room. In a little bit, we'll have TeamSpeak here. Uh, before he gets into the gameplay, I wanted to tell you guys a little bit about a new show we've launched. If, you, uh, if you've been enjoying Stoke, you should check out Jupiter at Night. It's a new live show we're doing 9 p.m. Pacific, Monday through Thursday. And then the show comes out for download pretty much within an hour or two after the mm -hmm. live show, and you can catch it. Anytime. So I just thought I'd mention that because uh, you might like yourself some Chris and Jeremy. And I know that it might seem biased to say this, but I think it's becoming one of my favorite shows on the network. I know. Well, I mean, it, it is because it's what's fun is like this last week we were able to cover stuff as it came up. So like the Apollo Moon landing mm -hmm. anniversary, uh, Comic Con. Yep. Uh, we had the day the Droid X came out. We had a review on the show of the Droid yeah, X on the day of. That's really yeah. something that we don't get to do with some it's, of our it's, other it's shows. It's a fun opportunity for us because we usually have to wait a week to talk Plus, to you guys about the stuff. live environment of doing it every night. We've got a pretty good lively room. community. You, yep. We kind of got a taste of that doing these live yeah. Stoke gameplay yeah. events, and so it's shifting gears back to Stoke. We're going to be playing while we while we talk about stuff. We've got some news coming up and all of that. Uh, but uh, first, uh, let's get into a little gameplay because that's what we're here for. New costume. Holy shit! My bad. People saluting me. Nerds. Spin the wheel and win. I don't know if I like her voice being played in the entirety of Quark's bar. I think it should be limited to only when the Dabo window well, is open. Have we seen her yet? Has there been a, is there, has oh, there yeah. been a hollow Lita? Lita? Because I haven't seen click her. Click on that. There True. she is. Well, so she's just in a dialogue box. I don't know. Is she here somewhere? Well, when I heard Hollow Lido, I thought maybe we'd see an avatar. No, she's standing next to me. We're going to have to warn you about possible spoilers here because this is, uh, you know, it's a game. And if you haven't been here yet, you like I have not seen this yet. Actually, neither one of us have seen no, this No, I yet. haven't seen this mission either. Uh, but um, it, okay, I've warned you. So that's your warning, but look how epic it is. Look at that. Yeah. Doom ba doom ba yeah, doom ba doom. This is terrible, guys. We suck. Okay. Somehow we have progressed the mission. <laughs> That's new. Yes. <laughs> Which basically meant that three more cubes warped in. <laughs> got that out of our system. The next step is to beam over to. Yeah, I got Whoa, it. Oh, she looks freaked out. Okay. Oh, they're being boarded, and we have to go to their ship. That's awesome. She's got Nancy Pelosi eyes, Gilmore says in the chat room. Yeah. Gilmore. Look at how many people are in that group. <laughs> so, we now oh. have to save the Romulan hostages. We've got more Borg behind us. These guys seem kind of wimpy. Or are we just badass? Are we badass? Mm -hmm. well, maybe we're badass. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Try it by yourself. That happens. Mm -hmm. I get that mixed yeah, up sometimes. No, no. Yeah. Yeah. Forget that I'm so awesome. You know, there's been some talk about the uh, new Sovereign class models that they're working on. They're not part of Season 2 or anything like that. But as a Star Trek geek, I love looking at these ship ones. And there's this one probably has been a little less well-received than the Galaxy was. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when I look at it, one of the things that jumps out at me is I think maybe the uh, shuttle bay seems a little funky, possibly. And I think I think what it is is it's just not their best designed ship. Uh, not, not cryptics, but... Star Trek's not yeah. best design ship. Oh, I agree. I was never really impressed with the Sovereign to start with. Uh, so here's another, here's a side profile shot of the Sovereign, and there's been some people talking about the humps. It's lovely lady humps here between <laughs> uh, the nacelle and the... Um, what are they going to do with all that junk? Right? It's got all yeah. this junk, all this junk, uh, between the saucer and the, and the warp nacelle. And uh, I guess that's also canon. You know, the, the, uh, one of the nice things about the last uh, 
few ships made in, in Star, for Star Trek movies and stuff like that is they actually have laser measurements of some of the models. Yeah. They built models, even though they were CG, and they have laser measurements. Now, mm-hmm. I, I love this long, sweeping shot because this really reminds me um, a little bit of the Excelsior. And uh, a little, I guess, inside baseball on the design of the Sovereign class is a lot of its primary design inspiration came from the Excelsior. Hmm. So uh, the fact That's that... That's a kind of a throwback then. Yeah, exactly. And the fact that it uh, is... That's one of the recognizable things from the screenshot shows that they're definitely getting the design inspiration right. Because one of the first one of the first things the Sovereign was known for is in the Bassard collectors here at the at the uh, top of the uh, nacelle. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were you know they were fluid, animated in, in in. Wouldn't that be cool? That actually did come up in the thread that where they were talking about this. Oh yeah, that'll probably be one of the next updates. Well, I wonder see. if they could just use the lava animation with like a like a sheen over it or something. Because <laughs> you couldn't tell. It almost <laughs> looks like lava in there. It, the Bassard collectors are the most confused aspect in Star Trek ship history ever. Those are the ones that uh, protect you from becoming a lizard when you go too fast and warp, right? That's what they do on the ship? What? Damn you, Voyager. The, what they originally <laughs> are supposed to be is hydrogen collectors. Oh. They're supposed to be always running hydrogen collectors, sucking hydrogen particles Why out. Why do they call them hydrogen collectors then instead of Bassard collectors? There is actually uh, a reason for that and because they didn't originally know what the, the function was going to be, hmm. so they called it Bassard collectors. They weren't sure if it was going to be like a gun from like energy directed, uh, dr- energy directed from the warp core directly, or if it was going to be some sort of like energy collection, and then they used it in uh, insurrection. They used it. Uh, they used they used an insurrection to suck up part of the uh, the nebula, the, the, the expanse area, yeah. and, and then sh- then then pull the Riker maneuver and blow it out the ass, mm-hmm. and then light it on fire. Um, <laughs> I love that the Riker maneuver is blow it out your ass, ass and light it on fire. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Great fun at parties. <laughs> it's a good party trick. I don't know. The Bassard Collector has a has a. Uh, oh, good point. Viper in history. the chat room points out that the Riker maneuver is performed with a joystick. Yes. <laughs> eject the warp core. I, I already did. did. Really, Jordy? You ejected the freaking starship's warp core without a direct order? <laughs> Are you kidding me there? Are you serious, Jordy? That's the best movie ever. And he did it from the bridge too, if I recall. I think he was on the bridge when he ejected the warp core, which huge freaking party foul. No, if you're ejecting your warp core, you should have to be down there in engineering, and you should have to use a joystick, just <laughs> like you have to use a, just like you have to use a joystick for the Riker maneuver. <laughs> and really, they ought to go back and uh, they ought to reboot the Picard maneuver. And, and Did Deanna use there. a joystick to ram the ship into the into the scimitar? No, I don't no? think she used a joystick either when she crashed it on the planet in uh, in uh, Generations. Maybe she should have been. Then she would have crashed less. Yeah. Maybe she just shouldn't have driven. Maybe. That girl, that girl is just dangerous Curse on the road. Those female drivers. I just want to point out something. When Jeremy just loaded up his character sc- selection screen here, uh, his Klingon uh, loaded without a bra for a second. And uh, that's not that family was, That friendly. was inappropriate. They all look exactly the same. That is racist. This is a ship of the Valkyries. Look at all these women. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. What's up? Well, there's no Ryan. Oh. Oh. Triple fail. One thing that they've changed in season two that I don't think is talked about maybe at all on this show yet is uh, they're actually making some improvements to the whole martial arts gameplay. Oh, yeah. So, well, not specifically. I think it's actually more of a PvP improvement. Oh, yeah. But just the fact that they're making these power changes and is... And you specifically have said martial arts is fun, but you haven't been playing it because what ends up happening all the time is because of combat. You every time I walk up to somebody, they just rifle butt, and I'm stuck there. You get knocked down on the ground, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what they're doing, probably, like I said, primarily for PvP, is they're getting rid of some of the... Um, or at least reducing the chance of that those palm strikes and rifle butts have to hold you or to mm. knock you down. I should say we're talking about uh, ho- ground combat, or martial arts, as you're playing your Klingon. Yeah. We're in the Klingon engineering, one of the new uh, interiors in Season 2, and it's kind of fitting that we're talking about the uh, martial arts stuff. Because that's really, when you're a Klingon, you're going to have your bat left and stuff like that. Absolutely. So these PvP changes are going to be what? Um, you can resist the rifle yeah. butt hold, yeah. finally. That's cool. There was actually a bug where in certain situations it would land no matter what resistances you had. Yeah. And they fixed that bug. But also they lowered the base chance of that hold being triggered from 50% down to 10%. Oh, that's a major drop. That's Yeah. I think that's going to be drastically improve people's ground combat experiences in PvP and martial arts, and I'm really looking forward to getting my hands on that. Anybody want to uh, hop onto Bordica's ship? (laughs) 
So that little uh, blob right there um, is uh, sector space, and that is fluidic space in sector space, and that's where we're heading right now. There's a portal you'll enter, and you okay. go into... So this is my first look at it. Is this your first look at it? Mm-hmm. Okay, and this is definitely our first look at it here on the show. Yep. So we're going to get a little shot of this with our fleeties while we're doing the live gaming, and uh, check it out. I'm excited. <laughs> I was flying in the wrong direction all this time. Well, that's your life story. Flying in the wrong direction. We just Man, had, isn't it? <laughs> the question came up about uh, weekly missions. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know that that's part of season two, essentially, is the rollout of weekly missions. Our understanding now, and I'm, I've been reviewing here over at the Stove Forum, I've been reviewing the... This is the official patch notes The, the official now, right? missions that are listed here, and they don't show weekly in here, so I don't think we're going to see weekly with season two, like the Tuesday this episode came out. Is that out. a Klingon mission called The House Always Wins? The, uh, I support that fully. That is a great name. The other thing also they mentioned here is bringing down the house. Wharf now correctly shows up when players need to speak with I him. saw that note earlier. Yeah, interesting. Those are great names. Those are actually remind me of Star Trek episodes. Yeah, names. exactly. So I, I'm excited to see the weeklies because if they're done well... They don't have to be amazing. They just have to be like me. Like I think I said in a previous episode, I just want to tune in every now and then like a, to an episode. Mm-hmm. And if I could tune in to play an episode once a week, mm-hmm. that could be fun. Um, so I don't know when we're going to see it, though. Okay, so here's the portal to the fluidic space fleet. Check that out. Can you do a transwarp? You know, the, the slipstream, I mean? And I'll try to capture that in the demo record as well. Let's get let's go into uh, fluidic space. They've kidnapped a Geckly, which is one of those space worm things that latched onto the. Oh uh, yeah, or, yeah, Junior. Yeah, yeah, Junior. I don't know exactly why, but they're threatening to destroy oh, it, and we're going to save it. You know, looking here at Fluidic Space, l- looking at the changes that they've done in Season 2, um, I I just, since the game is launched, there hasn't been a single update to the game that I haven't liked. Every time, it's been incremental improvements, sometimes mm-hmm. not as much improvement as I'd like. I'm, that's not the case with Season 2. Season 2 is a ton of improvements. Season 1 was good, too, but there was always something like, oh, yeah, okay, neat. Really, across the board, Season 2, I'm getting, you know, mini-games. The, the mini-games that, you know, everybody's talking about Dabo. Yeah. But the real mini-game here is when you scan anomalies. I agree. That's because you're going to do that the most, and yeah. it gives you a concrete reward, and, and it's, it's fun. you can interact with from level 6, basically. And it's quick, and it's like a surprise. Mm-hmm. It's, it's cool all around. People are going to like that. This fluidic space, they nailed it. I mean, it looks like organic living space. It's incredible. Oh, they just... I mean, I'm really happy with Season 2. I was really happy with the previous updates. Every time the game content comes out, it, it, these improvements are making it a better game. And one of the things that we said early on was that uh, there was... Um, once you got once you got through that early initial content, there was just this, uh, you know, total drought of mm-hmm. content. And everything that's been added since then has been cool. Some would actually argue that the um, the special task forces were a, down, okay. a downward improvement. That's true, and I haven't played those. The 
The mission says move the Geckley to the secondary feeding site. We're sitting on the indicator for what I thought we were supposed to be doing, but... I'm Herding whales is what h 2 Rat calls it. Yeah, I, but I can't see the whales. And how do you herd them? They should be scared of you. Oh, they're supposed to run away from... So you have to get, like, on the other side of them and scare them towards the... It's like, that's what h 2 Rat says. Oh it means that you're herding whales. God. So here's my initial impression of this fleet action. This fleet action sounds like a pain in the ass. But there are, what, one, two, three, I don't know, probably 15 of us flying around this instance. And in the past 10 minutes, we've managed to get one whale to the appropriate location. Can you tractor them? <laughs> you need to be able to tractor the space whales. You one. do. Or, like, initiate some sort of energy siphon that will lure them to your ship rather than having to scare That's them away. That's good. That is good. Also, um... This is not the kind of fleet action you want to do with a random group of people. You have to get the entire group basically on one side of the, yeah. the whales and push them. And but if anybody is on the other side, it's going to screw it up. I think it's a great idea. I really do. I like seeing more innovative um, goals in the game like this. I'm just giving people a heads up. You don't want to do this with some random because one person can screw this up. What if you? Is this only a fleet action? This is a fleet action. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'd almost be tempted if it wasn't for that upfront combat just to come in here by myself and just right. take two hours and, and yeah, hurt and do it myself. myself. Yeah. Hey, or that's the kind of thing you'd do. Just sit around and look at the pretty space yeah, and hurt absolutely. space whales. Coming up in today's math segment is something kind of new. It's not so much a gameplay mechanic thing that Jeremy's going to do. But he's actually going to show you how to use a tool that records at the 3D texture level every aspect of the instance you are playing in. It is epic. This tool is actually so powerful, and I'm not kidding here, we actually considered not telling you about it. We're serious. Yeah. Because there is always, with all great responsibilities, the possibility of doing evil. Do you want me to go ahead and tap it out and get this going for the live stream? Oh, well, I mean, I was just... Trying to set it up for the show so you could cut it in on editing before you went to the... I'll end up editing the crap out of this segment no matter what we do, so it doesn't really matter. In fact, I'm going to do it right now on purpose and make like some really jarring cuts. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, so what we're going to roll for you is a look at Demo Record. And uh, now we know a lot of you will have a lot of questions. We're probably not the best place to get all of those questions answered. We're going to have some links in our show notes that Jeremy will mention in the math segment, so go check those out. But uh, with that said, let's get back. <laughs> On today's You Got Math segment, we're going to be answering a question that a lot of you have asked us. All like 807,000 bajillion of you have written in at one point or another and said, Hey dudes! How do you do those epic sweeping camera shots that you put in so many of your episodes? And to that I say, hey dudes, that's a lot of you that have written to us and therefore we must answer. So today I'm going to give you a tutorial on the tool that we use. You see, it's built directly into Cryptic's engine. This is something that you, players of Stowe, can do in the comfort of your own living room or kitchen or wherever it is that you play Star Trek Online. This tool is known as Demo Record, and unfortunately it's not very easy to use before I get into giving you guys a tutorial on how to use this very powerful tool, I want to cover a few basic disclaimers right here up front. First of all, you must realize that this is not a finished tool set. And secondly, due to its unfinished and buggy nature, it might be turned off at any moment so that it can be later fleshed out and finished. Furthermore, I think it is important to tell you guys a few things that this tool cannot do on its own. The most important is undoubtedly that this cannot make playable video files. In order to capture your epic camera paths and everything, you will need a separate form of software. You can try a service like Wii Game, but most folks that I've spoken with actually prefer to use Fraps. It's not free, but it's relatively cheap and easy to use. Another important thing that Demo Record cannot accomplish is becoming a timeless recording of your exploits. Every time the client is updated, be that art or environment or special effect, that is going to break your demo file and cause it to be unable to render. And the last thing that this thing cannot do is to capture out-of-game inputs, things like Ventrilo, TeamSpeak, and such. If you're trying to get those included on your video software, Demo Record will not be capable of picking those up. 
All right, now that we have all the bad news out of the way, let me tell you about some of the really powerful and awesome things that this tool can do. First of all, when you fire this thing up in-game, it will capture the entire map that you are in. This means if you make a recording in any zone, the entire zone's geometry is recorded. By using this tool, you'll be able to free-fly the camera to areas of a particular zone that would otherwise be inaccessible to players in a live gaming environment. This is actually how Stoke captures some of our background images without NPCs walking in front of it. Now I want to make this clear, we do not endorse using this to give you spoilers or secrets about the way that maps are designed. This should purely be used as an artistic tool, so don't be jerks. Also, since the demo record function captures everything going on in an entire zone, this can very much be used as a performance review software. When you load up the demo play, you can go back into your footage and check out how your teammates are playing, maybe give them tips on how to improve their style, or help you determine that they're worthless, terrible players and you never want to see them again. Your choice. And last but certainly not least, this is an incredible tool to make epic machinima. With complete camera controls, you can zoom incredibly close to characters' faces to get their reactions during emotes and action sequences. You can also sweep way out away from the action to get epic vistas of s and setting up shots and landscapes and all sorts of great stuff with this. You can really let your creativity run wild. And as such, it's a great way to transform Stowe from just a simple game that you interact with into a fully interactive cinematic canvas. To get started using this tool, it's very simple. Anytime you're in the game, type in the command demo record and then put in the name of the file. Whatever file name you choose will be saved to your demos folder in your Stowe directory on your hard drive as file name demo. Remember that for future reference, you'll have to pull these up at a later date. When you're done recording, type into the chat window demo record underscore stop. Also worth noting is that it will actually stop recording if you change zones. As a quick tip, I want to let you know that you shouldn't record for too long, as these files do start to get pretty large and unwieldy. In my experience, it also seems as though the larger the file is, the more likely it is you will run into render errors while using demo play mode. When you're finished recording, you will need to exit the game in order to access your recording and begin turning it into epic footage. The next step in this process is performed from the patcher itself. Click the Options tab at the top. When this window opens, there is a blank text field at the bottom. Type into that text field, demo play, and then the name of the file that you just recorded. Now, when you click on engage at the bottom, it will look just as though it's launching the game. But when it finally loads up, you will now be in the demo play interface. Now that you're here in this interface, I have to tell you straight up that there are far too many functions within this software for me to give you a complete explanation or step-by-step -step instructions on every single thing that you can do. So I'm only going to cover a few simple mechanics and then point you to the closer to complete instructions that others have posted elsewhere on the internet. The first thing I'll do is give you a very quick and dirty UI walkthrough. The play, start, and stop functions here are in the upper left, but you might notice that there is no timeline indicator anywhere in here. Everything you are seeing is live rendered on the fly, and with most 3D render codes, every instruction is based on the one prior to it. Therefore, the footage must always be played in the same direction, that is beginning to end. If you hit play as soon as you get in here without doing any editing, you will be treated to a recording of whatever actions that you shot in-game using the camera movements that you also recorded in the game. But that's boring, right? So let's get to changing those camera paths. Clicking here on the camera path editor will get you to the portion of the interface that is most interesting and the most complicated. Now before we dig into that, I want to point out a quick tip that will come in very handy for the rest of this. In order to enter a free look mode, you must hold down the F2 button on your keyboard and then right click and drag. Now sometimes you'll have to do this twice to get it to catch. Once you have that well in hand, the next thing you're going to want to do is know something a little bit about the different camera modes. The default camera path that is saved into your demo file cannot be edited manually. It is hard-coded and does not display here as a valid path. The only way you can revert to this path is by deleting all other paths that you might create. To get started creating a camera path, click here on Create New Path, and you're given a list of options. I'm not going to dig into the details of each of these path types, but I'll point out a few resources on the web that can give you a more detailed explanation of how to use them. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm only going to cover the features of the Easy Path. Now, Easy Path is a type of waypoint system for free look paths. This is my preferred camera path as it feels like you're more in control of the actual camera that you're dealing with in something that's almost real time. The demo player will auto magically calculate in and out times between each waypoint that you set up depending on how far you are from the one prior to it. It will also record exactly what you're looking at 
The downside of this pathing method, though, is that you have to do a lot of manual correction of time codes, and attempting to line up your manually created camera shots with the action taking place with the demo can sometimes be a little bit difficult. My best tip I have to using this method is to play your demo in one second increments, then set your camera paths at the same time, moving via free look to where you want the camera to be at each of those one second interval keyframes. After you have the entire path set, you can go over here to the time from last field and edit each of those time codes to match up with the one second gaps that you were timing earlier. Now for some very long paths, the auto calculation of each waypoint's time will be much longer than you want it to be. Instead of editing each individual time from last, you can also edit the total path time field, and Demo Play will adjust the time for each individual waypoint accordingly. After every edit that you make, be sure to click the Save button at the top, because if you don't save, the render doesn't know to change anything that it's doing, and the commands that you've made in this user interface don't get sent to the render engine. Once your camera paths are saved, rewind your footage to the start, and prepare to be amazed by your own cinematic masterpiece! You can turn off the camera paths here to get a feel for how your shot turned out, and click in an empty space to deselect any camera points you may have highlighted. Using most camera path types, each individual waypoint can be adjusted a bit after you've put them in place, using the colored arrows attached to each of them. However, in some path types, you don't have as much control as you might like. Easy Path, for example, doesn't allow the editing of the direction that the waypoint is facing, only the position that it's in. As such, fixing an error after it's in place can be difficult, so I highly encourage you to take your time and frame each shot carefully as you set your waypoints. And that's actually all the input that I have for you guys at this time, but that should be enough of a walkthrough to get you guys started well on your way to creating epic Star Trek fiction that could put J.J. Abrams in his place once and for all. I'm including a link at the end of this to an incredible guide put together by one of our Jupiter Force fleeties named Mac, and this guide will offer you additional information and instructional assistance. It's well worth a read for anyone that's interested in using Demo Record. There is also a forum thread that I will link that is dedicated to this tool. And if you have any questions, as always, you can reach me at jeremy at jupiterbroadcasting.com. So until next time, everybody, you got mathed, or uh, recorded, filmed. You, you got shot, filmed is good. That'll do. <laughs>Last week's episode, we talked about our idea for the mail segment. We wanted your epic mission ideas. Those submissions need to keep on coming in. We're getting some good ones. Yep. And uh, you, can, you can send more of your ideas to stoked at jupiterbroadcasting.com. We were looking for maybe some multi-part act missions that have sort of an epic story arc that is really awesomely mm -hmm. Star Trek. And the more realistic it is... Uh, the to the more, current game mechanics, yeah, right? Yeah, thank you. If you uh, have more to like stretch the feature. mechanics a little bit, remain somewhat realistic. We had an idea, though, because we've been actually getting some really cool submissions, and the main reason we kind of wanted to push this out is uh, we wanted to allow for one more week, so next episode, episode 45, we'll be featuring your ideas. We're going to pick our couple of favorites, maybe like our top, what, two or three, you think? Probably two or three, yeah. Maybe even four if there's some really amazing ones, and then we're going to put it up for a vote. Yep. And we're going to let you vote on the one you like the most, and we'll give you links to that later. Mm -hmm. And uh, the one that wins, when user-generated content uh, creation comes out, which we don't have any confirmed dates or releases, it's all kind of we, hearsay. Uh, we firmly believe that that yeah. is the secret project. We believe that is the pro secret project, and we believe it's going to come. Um, so when it does, the, the story, the episode idea that is sent to us, that is voted the highest mm -hmm. by you, the viewers... We'll have the entirety of the Jupiter Jupiter Force fleet behind creating that mission and once you fine tuning out. it, making it the best experience that we can possibly yep. come up with. Until we can do it in UGC, we'll try to do it with demo record, which we just featured in this episode. Mm -hmm. We'll try to essentially recreate it from existing stock material as much as we can, right. at least for visual references. So that'll be fun. At least mm -hmm. it's a little something for the one that votes number and the one that wins number one for now. Um, well, with all of that said, I think that's pretty much everything we have for this episode. Uh, a place you can send us feedback is stoked at jupiterbroadcasting.com. You can also go over to jupitercolony.com. That's mm -hmm. our forum. Yeah, buddy. You can also, we do have a public section on jupiterforce.org. You can check out our forum there as well. And there's also facebook.com slash jupiterbroadcasting. Yeah, lean to the side, dude. Lean, lean that way. Look Why? That. Those people there, if you're watching the video version, those are people playing with us live right now on They Trudeau. watched our Facebook. Yep, Facebook. Well done, guys. Dot com slash Jupiter Broadcasting is where they found out about that. So now they are featured in this week's episode. And we've had a ton of fun playing with them live. Uh, we'll be back next week with a regularly formatted episode. And we'll be featuring your mission ideas. We'd love to hear your feedback in the meantime. But until then, everyone, thanks so much for watching this week's episode of Stoke.